This is Cthulhu Dark, The Secret of Castro Negro, part one of three. If you are following along on the video, we are playing this on a Friday and finishing on a Sunday, so you can tune in every single day and watch it pretty much in real time as we're playing it. So um, this is the, the Shadow Society group, and I'm very excited to have everyone. But for folks who don't know who we are, why don't we go ahead and introduce ourselves? Um, when I call on you, please say your name, your pronouns, and anything else you would like for viewers of the video, or me, I suppose, if you want to just surprise me in some way, uh, to know about you. So I will uh, start. My name is Jason. I use he, him. I am uh, I have no connection to Cthulhu Dark. Uh, normally, I usually say, this is, I'm the publisher of this game or whatever, but that is not the case today. Uh, I just love Cthulhu Dark. I'm very excited about it. Um, in general, I am the uh, a game creator and the co-host of a podcast called Fear of a Black Dragon. And we covered this module that we're doing today on that show. It was the, it was the episode that won us our any, incidentally. Uh, let's go over to Mads. Hi, I'm Mads, she, they, and um, I really love tabletop role-playing games. Um, so, so much so that I have tried to start my own YouTube channel as well as uh, my podcast, uh, Stories from Chaos Edge. And um, yeah, just like churning out a lot of content that I'm trying to catch up on a large backlog. So that's me. <laughs> Fabulous, thank you so much, uh, Ben. I am Ben. I use he and him pronouns. I make uh, character keepers and also uh, Cthulhu Lovecraft shit is, is my shit. So I'm super excited to be doing this. You're going to get all of it you can stand in this one. So, uh, Amanda. Hi, I'm Amanda. My pronouns are she, her. Um, I actually don't really know a lot about Cthulhu stuff. So this is this is going to be like really fun for me. I'm trying to think of something surprising to say, like something that people wouldn't know about me. Um, I actually, I am technically a member of Mensa, except I haven't paid my dues in years because they don't really give you anything. They give, they send you a pin and then you get invites to like hang out with people. And I, I don't like to do that. Uh, so I don't, I don't. Uh, that's a surprise about me. Surprise. Thank you so much. A genius in our midst. I love it. Um, let's go over to Rob. Hi, I'm Rob. He, him. Um, I'm just a keen role-playing gamer who got back into the hobby a couple of years ago pretty much thanks to jason's generosity in running games and uh in terms of connections to cthulhu mythos i once tried to run a wild west cthulhu mashup game using gurps back in the 90s so if that didn't go super well i'm sure this will go better Fantastic. Let's go ahead and do CATS. CATS is an acronym that stands for Concept, Aim, Tone, and Subject Matter. I like to do this before every session I run in order to establish some basic expectations for what's going to be happening uh, in, the, uh, in the module and in this uh, three sessions that we're doing. So the concept, Cthulhu Dark is an extremely rules light Cthulhu mythos uh, investigation game. Uh, you can fit the rules on a on a index card it's so uh rules light but it is a game that in its brevity and simplicity actually allows you to focus on the really really important parts of the sort of classic lovecraftian horror story um it is uh this group here i know is really familiar with trophy dark and so i'll tell you that it is one of the sort of progenitor games of trophy dark it has the trophy dark has a lot of the same like ethos of it which is and one of the big ones is in this game you play people who are who are becoming exposed to knowledge that should not be known uh, being exposed to like terrible alien secrets ancient horrible occult things and as you learn these things it's going to start to um affect you psychologically emotionally and if you learn too much if you go too deep it will sort of, uh, you will be shattered and drawn forever into the cosmic horror of the situation, right? Um, you can push back against it by essentially deluding yourself. <laughs> so as you discover horrible things and it's pushing you towards the edge, you can start doing rationalizations and start destroying evidence as a way of reclaiming and grounding yourself back in like what you know to be reality. So the mythos and this type of storytelling in general is about normal people learning too much and 
facing off against uh, horrors and seeing how they turn out at the end. Um, now, this particular module, I'm not going to say too much about it. It was originally written for Call of Cthulhu. Um, in Call of Cthulhu, because it's a more traditional role-playing game, you can actually like combat the monsters and stuff. <laughs> like you can fight them and, and win. Uh, but in this, in Cthulhu Dark, you cannot. Uh, if you try to fight a monster, you will always die. So you can escape and hide and that's it, right? Um, also, this is a very traditional sort of mystery game in the sense that uh, the clues are in a certain place, the information is in a certain place, and you are not, as a group, going to be coming up with the theory of the case. You are just moving through the mystery, trying to get to the end. Um, the aim of the characters in this story, and indeed your aim as a player, at least initially, is you all have an individualized reason why your character is in uh, involved in this. And so your goal is to solve your mystery. Now, you may not solve your mystery. Your mystery might not even have anything to do with what's going on. It might be a red herring. But in the attempt to solve your mystery, you should learn other things and get drawn deeper into uh, whatever's going on here. And that's the fun of it. Um, the aim of us as players is we're going to introduce our characters and then we're going to dive right into play. Um, and yeah, our overall sort of aim for the whole three sessions is just to see how these characters end up at the end. Just find out what happens to them by the time it's over. So um, the tone of the game uh, and indeed of the module is a very, uh, it's got very like historical folk horror vibes. Um this setting is a, this town of Castro Negro is a town with lots of peculiar history. And that history has a big effect on the things that are happening today in Castro Negro. And so drawing that con drawing those connections between this history, between this folklore, between uh between the past is really important to understanding the game's present. Um it is a dark story, it's quite dark actually. Um, it, it, witchcraft and dark magic figures really prominently. Um, so those are all so, some sorts of tone ideas. Um, in terms of subject matter, I've kind of already said it, but basically it's just, it's very like kind of, um, dark satanic shit. <laughs> okay, that's, a, that's the basic subject matter note. Okay. Uh, just dark witchcraft, uh, cosmic horror notes, uh, for safety tools. We're going to have two safety tools on the table. Uh, the first is the open door policy. And the second is the X card. Uh, I know you all know how to do this. So I'm not going to belabor that. I will say though, that we'll have, we'll have kind of a roaming lines and veils too. So like if something comes up and we're just like, eh, I'd rather not do that. We can just line it at that point. Um, and so that's how we'll kind of handle that. Um, any questions so far? Okay. Then in that case, let's go ahead and meet our characters. Now I will tell people watching the video that prior to starting, the players made characters and I secretly contacted each of them to tell them what their investigator is doing, what they're investigating and what they've learned so far. We did a die roll to see what they learned so far. Some people had better luck on the die roll than others. Uh, some people got to roll more dice than others. You might've noticed in the die roller. And um, this information is secret right now, but it doesn't have to stay that way. As in, in fiction, in, in play, you can share whatever you want with the other characters, but your characters don't know each other at the beginning. But let's go ahead and meet them uh, and just, Keep to the basics at this point. Don't tell us anything about what you're investigating. Uh, save that for when we're actually playing. Just basic character stuff for now. We'll start with Ben and Cliff Avery. Uh, Cliff Avery is a promising physics student at an as yet unnamed university in the New England area. Uh, and he is uh, here looking for somebody. Indeed. Thank you. Let's go to Dolly Mason. Dolly Mason was um, living close to the East Coast. She decided she wanted to make a name for herself in radio and started moving her way west. Uh, found herself in New Mexico where a lot of weird stuff is happening. And what's sexier for radio than spooky stories and, you know, murders and things like that. So she decided to stay put and look into some things. I love it. Thank you. Let's go to Nina. 
Yeah, Nina Durime is a nurse. And, uh... She knows somebody that has come here, and she is looking for them. And let's go to Ernest. Ernest Pickett is a um, an aspiring writer who has been, since he graduated university somewhere in the, in the East Coast, has been traveling the country gathering experiences to inform the great novel he will one day produce. So he's been living in a logging camp and working on a fishing boat and all these kind of rugged experiences. He has, he is also in this place looking for somebody. Doing the, the whole great American man thing. Exactly. Right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Good. I love it. Okay. Fantastic. We will definitely learn more about these characters as we go. Uh, I would invite you all to think about what you look like because we'll probably focus on that at the beginning and you'll have a chance to interact with each other and, share whatever information you want as you wish um, as we start. The Secret of Castro Negro. Now, you all have ended up for different reasons in Silver City, New Mexico. And from Silver City, you've taken a bus to Castro Negro, New Mexico, a very remote town. Silver City is a suburb of Albuquerque, and Castro Negro is a suburb of nothing. <laughs> it's, it is just a remote little spot. The bus out to Castro Negro leaves every Tuesday morning and takes two hours to reach the town. And that's where we're starting. The bus comes back to Castro Negro the same time on Wednesday and then doesn't come back for no, until Tuesday again. So shows up on a Tuesday, comes back on a Wednesday, and then it's gone again until Tuesday. There is kind of no other way to reach Castro Negro. <laughs> so um, the bus is your, is your way. You are all on this bus. It's just the four of you sitting, maybe you've spread out or something, I don't know. And of course, the bus driver. It's morning, so it's like around 9 a.m. or so. You should probably be in Castro Negro right before lunch. And I think just as the bus is sort of rolling down this deserted desert patch of road, um, just tell us what you look like and what you're kind of doing to while away the time. Whoever wants to go first, take it away. Uh, Ernest is sitting toward the back of the bus. He is wearing a, a kind of, he's smartly, but kind of sportily, casually dressed. So a shirt with a tie, but the sleeves are rolled up on his shirt. He has, a, has the waistcoat on, but the jacket's off. Um, he's kind of, you know, a slightly bohemian edge to his appearance but smart enough. Uh, he has a, he's smoking a cigarette. He has a, a notebook out that he's occasionally scribbling in and basically he's kind of people watching the other three uh, people on the bus and the driver. What does he notice? Cliff is a... Uh... A rather clean cut looking gentleman. He looks like he, he probably came from money, but judging by the way he's dressed here, uh, he might be trying to hide that fact poorly. Um, he has, uh, he's currently sitting, uh, I think toward the back of the bus. He's got a textbook on one knee and a notebook pad on the other, and he's trying to work through some equations uh, and not doing too well. Dolly is sitting near the front of the bus. She has some newspapers with circled articles spread out around her, a few notebooks, some letters. Uh, at the moment, she is practicing signing her autograph and not looking at any of the, the items that she has there. Um, but she is pretty smartly dressed. Her outfit is a little old fashioned, a little bit out of date, um, but it is from a stylish name brand. She doesn't have a lot of money, but she likes to spend it on good things when she can 
Thank you. Nina? I think Nina is in the middle of the bus, looking out. She's got like a smart little hat on. Um, she has um, like a, a puffy sleeved blouse <clears throat> that's tucked into a high waisted skirt that kind of um, is like a, a, a form fitting, like, you know, through the hips and then like kind of kicks out a little bit past the knees. And then she's got um, um, sensible shoes in that they're, they're low heels. Um, and then she's kind of like just looking in her purse, like opening it up, closing it up, opening it up again. Um, inside her purse is, um, well, probably a letter and a pair of gloves and possibly like a, a, like a little nurse's kit, you know, for, for dealing with wounds or injuries or something like that. But yeah. A little first aid kit. Yeah. The driver of the bus is a fairly nondescript looking kind of a paunchy guy. He's not wearing a uniform. Um, the bus itself doesn't, it's not like from any particular bus company. If this is just the bus that goes out to Castro Negro. Um, and he's kind of hollering, like he's kind of looking in the mirror, you know, to look back at you all and not speaking to anyone in particular. He's like, tell you what, I make this trip out to Castro Negro twice a week, every Tuesday morning, every Wednesday morning. And in a month, I can count on one hand the number of people who walk through those doors. And now here I've got four today. That's really something. Guess How long you been doing that hand. job, mister? <laughs> uh, Rob or Ernest, what do you say? How long you been doing that job, mister? Oh, I've been doing this. I've been making this run for, well, quite a few years now. Not really my main job, but somebody's got to go out to Castro Negro, right? There's no other way to get there. No train goes through, nothing like that. Not many people around here have cars, so I'm it. Now you can use your other hand to count. And then Nina will go back to looking outside the window. <laughs> he kind of laughs at that. He says, <clears throat> yeah, the only other people who really come from Castro Negro are uh, people who go to Silver City for church. They have their own little bus that they take. Funny, though, and they got a church there in Castro Negro, but they make the trip all the way out to Silver City. They do that every week. Well, that's what I understand, but I, well, I tried to, I tried to get that gig, but they were real particular about it. Didn't, uh, didn't want anyone driving that bus, but that old fellow they got who drives it. Anyway, strange thing, I thought. Uh. Strange, too. It's a beautiful church. Mr. Bus Driver. Sorry, what's your name? Bill, ma'am. Bill, it's lovely, lovely to meet you. Bill. Bill. Have you ever noticed, you know, the people coming to and from Castanegro, have you ever noticed they have children with them? Babies, even? He's like, oh. Well, now that you mention it, no, I guess not. There aren't too many kids in Castro Negro now that I think about it. But, you know, it's not exactly a, you know, single family home sort of town. It's an old, old place. There's not even a school or anything. There's nothing for kids there, I guess. Young couples what's, having kids. Not the kind of town you relocate to, you know. What's the, uh, what's the industry there? What's keeping the people, you know? making the dollars <laughs> industry <laughs> uh ma'am i gotta tell you i don't spend too much time in castro negro i drop off i pick up and i always get out of there as quick as i can why the people there are mean ah nah just superstition i guess you get a funny feeling you know no i don't what kind of funny feeling do you get and he's sort of um looks up at you and he says, you'll see, I guess. She starts writing notes on her, her notepad underneath her list of autographs. Well, come on, you can't keep us hanging like that. He's like, 
I better focus on the road. I think Dolly leans out and looks at the front of the bus and it's just like a straight road and nothing. <laughs> yeah, it's not like hairpin turns here. <laughs> I think Ernest kind of gives Dolly a stage whisper of, I think there's someone he doesn't want to tell us. I think you are right on there, mister. In spite of herself, I think Nina's going to pipe up. What do they do for medical care out the here? That's a good question. Make a, um, let's make a die roll. So if we t take a look at the rules thing, if you hover your thing over in Ben's character keeper uh, for investigating, um, you take one die if what you're doing is within human capabilities and merely the asking the question is, um, and another die if it's within your occupation's expertise. And given that you are a nurse, uh, I would say you can probably ask him follow-up questions to get some kind of answer. Um, you have another die that you can add to the die roll called the insight die, if you're willing to risk your mind in order to succeed. I would probably wait on that for now. Um, but you can always add it later. So for our die roller purposes, light dice are regular dice and the dark die is the inside die. So too light then. Too light. <clears throat> you can go ahead and roll it. A four. four. Now, the way this game works, every roll is a success. One through six, success. It's just degrees. So if you get a one, you learn very little. If you get a six, if you get a five, you learn the most. If you get a six, you also glimpse. Uh, something terrible so um that's how that goes so four is pretty good he looks at you and he says well i reckon most people if they get hurt they head up to casa de diaz that's the big sort of spanish villa that's a little ways outside of town they uh well the Diaz is a sort of a big, big time family there. And anytime there's any kind of trouble, well, that's who they go talk to because, you know, the Diaz's know things when other people don't know things, I guess. If they're out of town, is it, is it far to get there? Oh, to the Casa de Diaz? No, no, you can walk from Castro Negro to there. Thank you. Yeah. So what do they do, this family? This Diaz family? He's like, well, I don't know too much about them. They own almost everything, though. I think uh, Cliff will, will start. He'll put his book down on the seat and start making his way up to the front of the bus and say, excuse me, sir, before the, uh, the road claims your attention again. I was hoping you could take a look at this picture and uh, see if you recognize the gent in it. And uh, he'll, he'll pull out a picture. What's the picture of? A, another young man looks uh, about similar class and and, uh, and and bearing to Cliff. Is it a... Uh, hmm. Let me think about it. It... No, it doesn't matter. I was going to say, if it's, it's ask if it was black or white, but it doesn't matter. Um, he'll he'll look and he'll say, actually, uh, give me a single die die roll. A one. <laughs> he looks and he says, oh, yeah, yeah, I, uh, I recognize that fella. He, um, yeah, I think he was one of my passengers a few weeks ago. Oh, great. Yeah, great. Thank you. Thank you. I'll shuffle back to the his seat. He's like, you, uh, you, you looking for that fella? Uh, I am. Yes. He doesn't have anything else to say, but it might be a good entree for the rest of you. <laughs> you looking for someone too, mister? I am. Yeah. Uh, by the two there, I take it you're also on a hunt. You could say that. Who is it you're looking for? Oh, uh, a friend of mine uh, uh, named David. Huh. 
your friend, he was visiting Castro Negro? Well, I'm not altogether too sure, but uh, it's the, the closest lead I've got. Hmm. I do hear you tell the stories of people going missing and such up in this area. Have you ever heard any of those, any of those stories? I can't say I have, miss. What about you, Bill? He says, well, ma'am, it's the desert. That's what deserts are for. Wandering out to the middle of them and going missing. On purpose? There ain't much else to do in a desert, but get lost, ma'am. I think Ernest gets a kind of wistful look in his eye there and looks out toward the scenery. Thinking of the adventures he could have. Actually, there's all sorts of things to, to discover in, in the desert if you are looking for something to discover. Maybe that's uh, where someone would go. Dolly looks out the window, too, and it's just desert. <laughs> yeah, you can discover sand, snakes. Blue sky. <laughs> I see a cactus over there. Oh, bones, ruins, uh, you know, things to to look into, things from the past. Interesting that you jumped right to Bones. What's your name again? Uh, my friends call me Cliff. Hmm. Nice to meet you, Cliff. And you as well, Miss. Uh, Mason, Dolly. Good to meet you. Nina just reaches into her purse and kind of fingers the letter that she has in there, but doesn't really say anything. Just kind of watches everybody else. Bill, is this the only route you do? Oh, yes, ma'am. I just, uh, like I said, this isn't my main gig. I uh, I work at a butcher shop most days. Butcher I just, shop? I just do this for a little extra cash. In uh, Albuquerque, I take it? Oh, uh, well, Silver City, yeah. Silver City. You know, I uh I actually just came from Silver City myself. Nice nice little spot. He picked all of you up in Silver City. He's like, "Yeah." Um <laughs> he's like he's like, "Uh well, it it's uh it's 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 all right, I guess. I mean, if you want to really do anything, you got to go to Albuquerque. That's where everything is." I uh had a few nice chats with a bunch of the ranchers out there in uh, Silver City. Do you know any of them since you're in the butching business? The butchery business. Make a single die. A three. And any, I'll mention it. Anytime you can add your insight die and roll them both again to see if you get a better result. Um, the three is going to be like just basic information. He says, so, uh, wait, so say your question again. Uh, asking if he knows any of the local ranchers. He's like, sort of oh, yeah, them. yeah. In my business, you get to know them all. Yeah, I uh, I do uh, hear tell that there's there's a big problem out with the uh, the ranchers. Does oh. that affect your <laughs> your business in the butching at all? Let me guess. You're, you're talking about the cattle mutilations. Sure am. What a strange thing, hmm? Huh? Well, eh, you know, I don't have... Everybody has an opinion on that, ma'am. Uh, some people think it's little green men from outer space that's doing <laughs> that to them cows. Other people think it's rival ranchers trying to terrorize in order to get a leg up. I don't really know myself. It happens with a frequency, though, that makes you wonder what it's all about. I'd say probably, oh, I don't know. Probably one cow every month or so for the that last seems, uh, five five or six years. I mean, that seems pretty excessive. You say some people think it's the uh, work of little green men, eh? Yes. Well, people like to talk, ma'am. Yeah, what do they what do they talk about when they say things about that? And just about then he's like, Oh look, Castro Negro's just up ahead. He's like, We're almost there. Now Fair warning, 
I come back tomorrow around the same time. And if you, so if you need to get back before next Tuesday, then you got to be on that Wednesday bus. So uh, I hope this is just a day trip for you or you're ready to stay for a week. There's a single hotel. That's where I'll drop you off at since I assume you're staying the night, unless you're <laughs> for some reason staying with a local. Um, but uh, we're, we're just about there. And as he's sort of like, pulling in to Castro Negro. Here, I'll refer you to the map. He kind of cuts down, uh, he kind of cuts down 13th Avenue. He's kind of giving you a little tour. He says, now here in the center of town, that's that church I was talking about earlier. earlier. Beautiful, beautiful old Spanish church. It's just gorgeous. But uh, like I said, <laughs> no one attends services there. And over here on your left, uh, oh, that tobacco shop is real nice. I sometimes stop in there on my way out uh, to grab to grab some smokes. Um, they have a surprisingly nice library here in town. Then he turns right over onto Diaz Avenue and he stops the bus, which is right at the front of the hotel, the Herrera Hotel. And he says, so up that way on Valela Pereira Street, uh, you've got, well, you've got, uh, there's a there's a social club over there on the corner. Um, we know what that means, don't we, Miss Mason? Um, I don't know if you knew your name or not, but let's, let's say he did. <laughs> and he says, so uh, a private social club, which definitely has nothing to do with drinking hooch in the back um that's that's over there and then you've got uh, that's called the changeling funny name um and then down the other way on valela Pereira street uh well most of those buildings are pretty empty though uh there's a little uh kind of a little gift shop over that way if you're picking up knickknacks not As too much though these things. yeah she's saying this she um nina will actually get up a little bit out of her seat and say these street names, are these family? Like people? Oh, yeah, here? yeah, yeah. Uh, well, D well, Diaz, we talked about that earlier, and uh, Valela Pereira, they're the two big families in town. Do you know where the Valela Pereiras are? He, like, spreads his arms all around and says, I mean, you, you can't walk down any street or any go into any building in this place without stumbling over a Diaz or a Valela Pereira, ma'am. Good to know. Thank you. Right. And she'll sit back down. She opens the little bus doors. Same time tomorrow morning for those of you heading back to Silver City tomorrow. Otherwise, you got a week unless you want to walk. <laughs> well, thank you, Bill. Thank you, sir. Most it's been most interesting. Indeed, indeed. Enjoy your Bill, stay. you are a delight. Thank you so much for all your help. In getting I've never been things. described as a delight, but I'll take it, Miss Mason. I'll take it. And might I say you are one fine looking lady. Oh, well, you know, I try. A girl's got to get her uh, her beauty sleep and whatnot to, to keep herself looking young. Good luck with that here. Good night or, or day. <laughs> Nina will quietly step down and say thank you as, as she leaves the bus. So will Cliff, but he'll kind of sidle up to Dolly and say, what do you suppose he meant by that? Good luck getting sleep here. Well, maybe this is one of those towns where they have uh, parties at night. You know how it is when during this places that the, the cops don't go very much. There's a lot more drinking outside. Oh, well, I suppose. Dolly looks around and it doesn't seem to me like there's very many cops here. And perhaps, perhaps we should we should take a trip to the change lane this evening. Well, I'm not sure about you, but I'm going to make sure I get a really good hotel room tonight. We were there at the Herrera Hotel. The bus pulls off turns, makes a right onto Valilla Pereira and 
Bill waves. Gives you the thumbs up. And the bus. Down well, we're stuck here now. There are no cars that you can see. No trucks. It's really dead. You don't see any people in the streets. It's just like stone cold dead. The buildings are all, um, with the exception of the church, the place is... Um, it has a very like historical look. The buildings are all like adobe with Spanish tile roofs, that kind of thing. Um, it's a it's it's a blending of like kind of Spanish styles with uh, some of the newer buildings are are made with wood, but um, it does feel a little bit like stepping into stepping into a time warp. The best kept and most beautiful building is that chapel, which is right behind you. Um, it's it's situated in what's essentially like a little yard, like a green park, kind of like, you know, kind of center area. And it's quite lovely. Um, yeah. What do you all do? I had a character question. Since we can see the chapel, we can see this park. Is there a cemetery? Uh, uh there is. Yeah. The chapel? Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. Definitely. Um, a young man who is um, tall, blonde, looks like he's about in his early 30s. He steps out of the hotel and, because not many people come through here, so he would notice you. He steps out and he says, oh, hey, hello. Um, are you are you here for a, you, you here to, do you need a room? Yes, yes, indeed. Um, and Nina will hurry on, you know, up oh, to well, him. And... Please come in. Uh, uh, I, I assume it's either... Uh, are you all, are you married couples? What, what is the, do you need four rooms, two rooms? What are we looking at here? No, I, I, I just need my own room. Thank you. Oh, uh, certain, certainly. Come, come, come in, please. Uh, everybody here, let me help you. <coughs> if you have any bags, he'll try to help you with them. Um, inside the Herrera Hotel, I assume everyone's going in. The building itself, it's an old adobe building, probably at least 100 years old, um, with two stories. The first story has kind of a lounge and a dining area. There's a little desk area, which you're at right now. Um, and there's a kitchen and the sort of um, management quarters towards the back. The second story is where all the rooms are. Let's have a little paint the scene here. This is not the module, by the way. Um, Looking around, how do you know the Herrera Hotel never has guests? There is a rather thick uh, guest book on the counter that is still on its third page. There's a stand of postcards that you can buy to send off to to friends and whatnot, you know, wish you were here. Um, but they all have really outdated pictures. Some of them say New Mexico and the dates like 10, 20 years before written in the year written on it. Uh, so it's clearly these got bought in bulk and have not been sold. I think we just see this young man with the bags kind of wandering where he's supposed to put them so you know they're not he's not used to this activity of of bringing people bringing people in so he's kind of you know a little hesitant and kind of keeps stopping and starting tasks as he's as he's in, introducing us into the into the room i think you see the furniture in here they all look very new like never been sat on, never, you know, used or what have you. But underneath you can see where the the wood or what have you is not um, uh, worn down or anything. And everything else around them looks more, looks like sun washed, sun bleached. He says, now, um, let's, uh, oh gosh, um, uh, let's get you signed in. Um, so I'm pretty sure I have a 
a registration card here somewhere. Um, well, you know what? We can just take care of this in the uh, in the morning when you're checking out. Um, four rooms. I'll uh, I'll take your things up. Um, and he's kind of grabbing keys from the you know from the little thing. Says um, everybody just staying one night, I assume, or not that it really matters. We don't have a lot of check-ins later in the week. Let's call it one for now, and we'll see how things how things progress. Right, right. Well, it's um, it's two dollars per night, and uh, lunch is twenty five cents. Though I'm so excited to have you all here, I think I think we'll let the first one be on the house. Um, I was just about to put on some, uh, well, I, I've got some old skirt steak. I was going to fry that up with some peppers and onions. It's kind of a simple fare, but I, I can make more if you want. Um, have it ready in the dining room in like 20 minutes. That sounds absolutely delicious. What's your name? Oh, yes. <laughs> a fool of me. Uh, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm Juan Herrera. Uh, I am, uh, I am the, the owner of of this uh, establishment it's actually been in my family for uh, many many years oh goodness you're so young to be owning a hotel that's uh quite the achievement for someone your age well it's uh i mean it just came to me i was just who was around in the herreras that is now now don't downplay your own achievements i think that's something to be very proud of yes well um Okay. Uh, well, uh, let me know if you need anything in your room. I'm fairly certain the beds are made and clean. Um, and uh, I do everything around here. So just come find me. Uh, my room, my own room is in the back by the kitchen. Um, and I'll, uh, and I'll get that skirt stick going. If he does leave the room, I want to take a look at the guest book. You Thank can you. make the... Make an investigation roll with one die. Um, you can get a second die if you can justify a, your occupation giving you a skill, but I don't know if it's just sneaking and looking up. Yeah, really aside from like being a paranormal investigator, <laughs> yeah, I'm not yeah. looking for anything in particular, so I don't think it really applies. Yeah, give it a roll. A four. Hmm, let's see what you might learn. I think I'm just taking the guest book and signing it in my practiced autograph mm -hmm. uh, as a, well, just to, to make it look like I'm not just snooping, but it's such right. a short guest book that it's easy to snoop. Um, yeah. Taking a look at the guest book, you do see a couple of names um, from what looks to be about I don't know, maybe, maybe like three weeks ago or so. It's like mid-October right now. And these would have been like in around mid-September, roughly. You um, see a Godfrey, a Godfrey in there, miss? There's no Godfrey. There is, however, a David Lane. From mid-September. Other check-ins are what had they been for or from like many months prior um and the names don't have any meaning to you yet i can't remember did cliff mention the david's name he mentioned, yeah he mentioned it yeah. to me so i was just gonna say yeah i definitely overheard that because <laughs> we were on such a small buzz and i'm nosy um <laughs> hey uh cliff that the guy you're looking for he's uh that's David Lane, right? That's him, yeah. Uh, and he'll rush over and, and try and peer at the book. I'm just going to pass it to him. I think as you're looking at the book, you hear Juan coming up the hall. He's like, oh, it turns out I'm a, I'm, I'm a little short on skirt steak. Uh, is, is pork okay? I've got pork. And... Once he's coming, do you make an attempt to like not look like you're looking through the guest book, or are you just gonna be casual about it? Ernest will just call out. That sounds fine. In a in a kind of attempt to keep it, make him just go straight back. Yeah, 
straight back. That's good enough. He says, okay, all right, good. Goes back. What are you doing right now, Nina? She's looking at those. She's looking at those postcards to see if there's anything that indicates, well, like streets, mm. street names, mm-hmm. that sort of thing. And then looking to see how old they are. Yeah, make a um, yeah, make a, an investigation roll with one die. Okay. Six. <laughs> One of the postcards it's the only one in the little carol has it shows a scene a photograph of a tall obelisk standing in the middle of a circle There's no writing on the postcard. But on the back, there is a note written on it that says, Ha ha. What if we convince people to come out here? Here's the thing. Just looking at the obelisk triggers the insight roll. So you are going to roll a single dark die. Uh, You can just roll ruin on the die roller. And if you roll higher than your current insight, then your insight goes up. You got a two, so your insight goes up to two because it was one. Looking at that obelisk makes you feel funny. How so? Her eyes are drawn into the obelisk as if she's getting closer into the picture and like she's about ready to step into the scene and touch the obelisk itself. She's that close. Ernest, you'll notice Nina sort of like spacing out right now. What do you do? I think he'll step over and say, what did you find there, miss? Oh. (sighs) Are you okay? uh, I, oh, I was looking at this. And she will, you know, show him the picture but really quickly like you know flip it over to show the writing and say this is odd somebody meant to send this ha ha what if we convince people to come out here somebody playing some kind of prank I don't know and then she'll flip it over back to the picture to show you the obelisk I'll note that the other postcards depict like what could theoretically be called like tourist attractions, right? Historical chapel and, you know, sandstone arches and that kind of thing. It seems like the joke here is like, oh, what if we were like advertising this to everyone, right? Yeah. Well, that is... That is quite unusual. So what did you think of your brooms? Juan comes back up. Oh, Um, you're all still here. Well, you told, you gave us the keys, but you didn't tell us which rooms we needed. Oh, well, they're right there on the little tag, ma'am. Oh, how silly of me. (laughs) If it was a a snake, it would have crawled down your throat and eaten your insides. (laughs) Actually, Mister, uh, and I think uh, Cliff will just grab the book and and po- point out David's name and say, "Do you remember what room uh, this young man stayed in?" 
He's like, oh, um, oh yeah. Uh, well, I, I, uh, yes, I guess he would have been in room. Uh, well, I don't, I don't quite recall. Uh, but I usually give people room four. That's the nicest one. If there's nobody else staying, I gave you that one, ma'am, to Nina. And Cliff will turn to Nina and say, do you, do you mind if we trade, actually? Is is that okay? I know it's a nicer room, uh, but or maybe I could just look around first. Well, by nicer, I just mean it has like it has like two blankets instead of one. <laughs> oh, I can I can I can give you the extra blanket if, if that's that that's that that's that's fine, sure. Well, and it doesn't have a outward facing window also. Also fine. I mean, I it think doesn't you. have one, and that makes it a nicer room. Oh yes, definitely. <laughs> Why? What happens around here at night? That pork's just about done, and he he's uh he's going into the dining room to set up plates and things. I'm I'm basically like Nina will lean into to Cliff and say, "Now that makes me curious to see this room." Oh, uh, I'd be happy to let you take a look. It's fine. You know, we're all becoming fast friends here. Why don't we all go take a look? Oh, uh, okay, yeah, sure, absolutely. I think Dolly kind of links her arm in with uh, Cliff's arm as they start walking towards the room. Now, I do gotta ask you, it sounds like uh, your friend David, the one that went with, he went missing, right? Around here? Uh, well, I, I don't know for sure that he's missing yet. I maybe just haven't found him. Huh. When was the last time you heard from him? Uh, er, well, early September. And what was he out here for? Um, well, I'm an investigator of type of sorts. Just, just saying. I'm not just. I'm not just nosing. <laughs> oh well, maybe, uh, maybe you might be interested in this. Uh, he is uh, an anthropologist, actually, and he is. Uh, well, I, I don't know exactly why he's out here, but it's where his parents told me he last last went. An anthropologist, you say? Did he yes. mean he studies ants? Oh. <laughs> Nina uh, giggles. Uh, no, Miss uh, Mason, he, he studies, um, well, the bones of, of people. Dead people, long dead people. Wouldn't that be an archaeologist? An anthropologist studies cultures and, st and the like. Well, he's more of the, the physical anthropologist kind. Archaeologists study more, uh, you know, buildings and, and pottery and stuff Ruins. like that. He's, he's more for the meat. Did you just I say meat? Of the field. The Pork's study. almost done. Not, not meat. He comes out sizzling. And setting up. Dolly kind of just wrinkles her nose. This talk of human meat does not make her want to have pork I mean, Nina's fine with it, but then she's just going to turn to Ernest and, and say, Is it just me, or is this all very odd? It certainly seems that way. Tell me, Cliff, did, did this David fella know uh, Professor Godfrey? Uh, oh, you're, oh you're, sorry, you're asking Cliff. Yeah. I, I can't say, sir. Because I, as it happens, am looking for a huh, an old acquaintance of mine from my university days, a Professor Godfrey. He was a professor of psychology. Still is, I should say. Well, uh, I, I don't think the two fields overlap that much, but uh, maybe they worked together at the university. Aside from being an ology, that is. Indeed. So the two of you are looking for some missing chaps. Uh, Miss, I'm sorry, I don't think I caught your name. Derime. Miss Derime, you looking for a missing person too? 
kind of hoping he's not missing. But I guess, I guess, in this circumstance, I suppose so. Huh, and who are you looking for? Someone I knew back in, in Silver City. Huh. Supposedly, from here. And in from the street, which she just kind of like waves, you know, waves in the air. From the street seems to be one of the more prominent families here in Castro Negro. So, I did not know that. You're from Silver City, Mr. Rhyme? Uh, yes, yes. Um, huh. So you must know all about those cows getting all cut up and such. I'm not a veterinarian, so no. I mean, I've heard about them, but... Um... Why don't we continue this conversation over lunch? Over Seems pork. Seems like we all have a lot in common. It's not getting any warmer. Oh, Juan. You charmer. You're just trying to get us all to try out your, your new recipe, aren't you? It's like, well, there's not much recipe to it, ma'am. You just... You just cut up the meat and put it on the skillet season it right not easy to come by the meat no you don't have farms around here oh well not like there used to be that's for sure <sighs> this don't, well this don't look much like farmland to me is it ran ranch and country uh, yeah, yeah, we have we 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 have historically had a few ranches out uh, around here, but uh, well, um, but not pig ranches is what you're telling me. Uh, well, <laughs> the only uh, the last farm, I guess, that uh, was most recently in operation was the uh, the old shepherd farm, um, not far from here. Uh, I think they're. Their old that old barn of theirs is still still standing. The rest of it's kind of gone to seed. So yeah, meat is tough. You have to kind of you know go to people who have access to such things. So would that be one of the one of the Valela Pereiras that would have access to such things? Oh well, uh, the the, the, the Valela Pereiras and the Diazes. Uh, yes, ma'am. They are. Um, they are. They are. They are the stalwart pillars of our community, so to speak. Although the Herreras are no slouches. Just want to throw that out there. No, you uh, have Will you all be sitting in the same table or? Yes, that, that'll be fine. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah, wonderful. we're all becoming best of friends now. He lays out some plates and there's the meat in the middle of the table on this skillet. He's got some tortillas and some various fixings. And he's like, um... Let me know what you think about that pork. I think it's um, especially tender. Well, that sounds great. You, else. He you won't goes. be you won't be eating with us. Oh, I I'll take mine in my room. I don't want to I don't want to impose on guests. It seems like you all have a lot to talk about. What are you all here in town for anyway? Is there some sort of like uh, some sort of by the look of you, maybe you're intellectual type some sort of something going on oh Juan, you flirt. academically seems like something's going on and seems like we're all looking for someone well that's the most excitement we've seen in a while so enjoy your pork and he leaves dolly pushes the pork plate like further away from her i've just decided to go vegetarian just now <laughs> I think Ernest Ernest starts to scoop some onto his plate, and you know, it's, well, this good rustic fare is looks delightful. It is indeed delicious and exceptionally tender. It's really quite good, Miss Mason. You should try it. Oh, after all that talk about people, meat, and bodies, um, no. I'm 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 real fine without it. Well, I, actually, uh, in general, there's no meat left with the 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 work that uh, David gets up to. But uh, what I, does I he can, do with it? Well, you can learn a, a lot about people from um, their remains. 
And that's what else he was out here doing, you think? Learning about people's remains? Well, uh, that's... I, I suspect, yes. Huh. And your friend, Pickett, your friend, Mr. Professor Godfrey, was it? Well, I don't know rightly what he was doing here, but he was a... He was a man with many and varied interests. I... I've been in communication with him ever since I came down from university. And, well, the last I heard, he was in this area, and it's unusual for him not to ride back for so long. Well, it's and so I, nice that he was a good friend to come looking for him. Well, I do enjoy traveling the land. Mr. How about I, you, Miss Mason? Uh... Oh, well, I'm an investigator of sorts, you see. That's fascinating. What type of investigator? Oh, you know, a little this, a little that. I can't really get into the details. You can't be too careful about who's going to scoop you, you know? I see. I see. Well, rest assured, I deal in fiction myself, not, not factual reportage. You know, Novels? I never thought about anybody writing a fictional series about me and my exploits, but uh, that's something on the table. And while lunch is proceeding, we will take a five minute break. Lunch is fine. Sounds like everybody but Dolly ate. <laughs> um, <laughs> you can eat the peppers and onions, Dolly. Um, and Juan will clear up the plates and he's going to you know, he'll be in his room if you need anything um, and leaves you all to it. It's probably a little afternoon at this point. And so, Cliff, what do you do? I'm going to check out the hotel room. Is this room number four where David was staying? Yes. As noted, there is no window. <laughs> um, it's, it's the first thing you notice because it's very dark when you open the door. Um there is uh, a blanket with a little folded blanket at the end of the bed as well. Um, very fancy. A little wardrobe bed. Pretty simple room, actually. Uh, the bathroom is one of the situations where it does have, um, it does have uh, like a, um, like, it, it does have indoor plumbing, which is uh, in this part of the country at this time is still a little rare. Um, but it's just one central thing. You all share the same bathroom on the floor, so... Um, but yeah, you're in there. What do you do? I think, I think like at the very least Nina's there, if not everybody, because it's like we said, we all want to see this weird room. Did you all go in there? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you're all in this little room and you, it's just as I've described. Okay. <laughs> so. Uh, I assume, uh, electric lights, gas lights. Electric. We'll flip the, the switch on and express some relief when... It's no longer pitch dark. So, uh, um, well, uh, here you go. And he'll, he'll take the blanket and hand it to Nina. Seems fair. Thank you. i just wondering what's so mysterious about this room. What if this don't beat all a room with no window? <laughs> it's like a closet. Well, a big closet, I suppose. Uh, closet. Nice. <laughs> Ellie just goes and opens one? one of the drawers on the wardrobe. Uh, yeah, um, it's there's nothing in it. It's empty. At a glance, doesn't seem like anything particularly surprising in this room, aside from the lack of window. Yeah, Under I'm... The bed for funsies. Is it is it like just like a regular twin bed or whatever? You know, basically. Uh, yeah, the bed is like a it's like a like a like a full size bed, like a single. Yeah. Yeah, just for funsies. I mean, Nina's gonna kind of duck down a little bit and then like see if she can see anything under the bed. Um, that feels like a much more proactive step. Make a make an investigation roll. Sure. Um, and is that just the same thing? It's just like a just a, a single light die, unless you can justify a second die because of your occupation. I'm not sure being a nurse. <laughs> no, is, not really. Uh, no, no real reason. <laughs> yeah. And you got a two? Okay. 
you do notice something actually. Dusty footprints that go from the bed to a wall where there should be a window and then stop. They are bare footprints. Nina's going to call attention to that. It's like, look at this. And then she's going to trace her hand so you can follow the path. And then she's going to go to that wall and just kind of reach out and touch it. She feels like a wall. Dolly's going to knock on the wall. See if it sounds like it's solid. Uh, Yeah, I would say it does. Yeah. Maybe the last person staying here just really like this wall. Maybe. Does it look like there used to be a picture hanging on it or anything? Go ahead and make another investigation roll, Dolly. Uh, three. That's an interesting roll. Um, no, nothing like that. But the footprints are like halfway. So like they stepped into the wall kind of. <laughs> a little weird makes no is there sense. um baseboards along the wall uh no actually no it's not okay. is it just solid or is it slab no, it's just wood? It's, it's 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 adobe and so it's just like kind of like sort of stone mason okay joining up with the floor yeah a ghost do we dare suggest such a thing no. That's, oh, right. that's I don't think we need to jump to that conclusion right away, but this is very unusual. Well, we don't want to rule it out either. Oh no! Oh no! Indeed. I I feel like we can rule out ghosts. <laughs> now, Cliff, just because you're, you know, our our resident intellectual, doesn't mean that you know everything. There's lots you don't know, I'm sure. Oh, of course there are. There's there's lots I don't know, but uh, well, there there must be some sort of maybe uh, whoever this was was just uh, you know stretching their tendons, and Cliff will make a an attempt to you know press the ball of his foot against the wall and his heel down on the floor. Indeed, indeed. I think this line of inquiry is probably tapped out. So, Ernest. Um, what are you going to get up to after this little moment? Everybody looking at the floor in this crammed little room. If if Nina still has the postcard, or I guess if not, I think Ernest will go to her and say, that postcard you found, you suppose that, well, that obelisk is, is something here in town? I, I wouldn't. If not here in town, then something very close by. The rest of them look like things that uh, I guess you would send tourists to to look at. I mean, like landmarks, things like that. I'll note that the obelisk was really tall. It seems to me we should be able to see it. You, uh, yeah. If you care for some company, why don't we go look for it? That sounds like a good idea, and if if you don't mind, I, I mean, I, I'm sorry, this is very forward of me. Um, you don't know me at all. I am, I want oh, to- I don't stand on ceremony, miss. I'm a down-to-earth type of fella. <laughs> good to know. Um, Nina. Ernest, it's yes. a pleasure to meet you. Pleasure to meet you. Um. I was also thinking about trying to find out more about the Valela Pereira's. I mean, for whatever reason, it didn't seem like they wanted to mention them, more of the Diaz's, and I have to find out why. 
Is that what brought you here? Your friend was a, is a Valela Pereira? Yes. And I don't know if there's something strange going on, although from the way everybody's talking, you'd, uh, you'd think that's pretty likely. So maybe- This place in... gets stranger by the minute. Yes, I think maybe in searching for this obelisk, maybe we will be able to head up to the Diaz place and find out if they can, well, tell us anything. Or tell me something. I'm I'm sorry. I I, I don't mean to to pry. Um, no, no. For your friend. My friend, yes. Doctor Godfrey. Perhaps I'm sure he would have introduced himself to somebody in town. Somebody must have seen him. Right. And he would have been fascinated by that obelisk. I can tell you that. A psychologist. Oh, yes, but his, as I said, his interests are quite wide-ranging. He was fascinated by superstition and and the like. Signs and symbols. Indeed. Huh. Interesting. Is that an area of expertise of yours, ma'am? No, no, but you meet a lot of people when you are working in a hospital. And uh, sometimes people tell you things, or sometimes people discuss different things. Because what <laughs> what's more to do than lay in your bed and hopefully the friendly nurse will be able to talk? Well, that is a fascinating insight. I had never thought to try my hand at Hospital work. Perhaps I should. Oh, Animal Ernest. trades. <laughs> uh, Cliff, um, I think at this point we can probably safely assume it sounds like you're all kind of splitting up a little bit at this point. Um, the rest of you can kind of like set your things in your room and kind of get sorted and situated. Um, you'll always be able to return back to your room if you need to. Um, Presumably, you'll be staying here tonight as well. Uh, Dolly, what's next? After I put my stuff away, I think I'm going to go and check out that little cemetery. Oh, good. Um, when you head back downstairs, Juan says, Oh, um, I wanted to let you know that we have, despite... The fact that the town does seem fairly small and uninhabited, there are a few interesting things you may want to have a look at. Um, the church right across the street, beautiful historical building, um, historical in a sort of way, I should say. And, um, well, there's there's the changeling but I don't, I'm not sure if a woman of your obvious refinement and sophistication really wants to go there. Um, it's a private social club, if you know what I mean. Um, oh, and there's the, there's the tomb. Strange name, I know. It's a sort of um, antiquities shop. They sell all kinds of strange stuff. They do a surprisingly good business and have a big, big stock, considering it's in a town with of fewer than 600 people. I don't know how they stay open. I don't know how we stay open. I guess you just uh, find a way. Isn't that right, ma'am? Absolutely. And I can tell you are a man of great insight and intelligence. So I, I can say that you're probably probably doing really quite well, despite the fact that, uh, well, clearly don't get a lot of traffic through here. No, I suppose not. But, uh, you know, we don't really have to worry about things like, uh, you know, supporting municipal activities. We we have a constable, but uh, he's just just one guy, and we don't really have that much trouble around here. Taxes aren't really much of a concern, and the building's long paid for. So, eh, and I, 
I, I find ways to get by. So not not much of a local government here then. Well, not so much. No, no, we're kind of a uh, we're an old style town where things are run such as they are by mm-hmm. just mm-hmm. families, people you know. You know. Yeah, I don't see much much family you know stuff around here. No little playgrounds for the kids. No schools. It seems like it. Where'd you go to school? Oh, I was um, I was educated at home. Um, and uh well yeah i we don't um there aren't many kids here in town that's that's very true um i uh i myself am am a single gentleman and not likely to have kids now that's a soon. surprise to me a good looking fellow like you oh gosh <laughs> um well i hope your room was nice it's Absolutely perfect. I really love the uh, the view that I have from my window. Just beautiful. He's like, yeah. So make sure you make sure you close the curtains at night. Oh, we got a lot of peeping toms around here. Um. Well, it's on the second floor, so you don't have to really worry about that so much. Um. But nevertheless. Well, I think I'm going to go take a look at that beautiful church you mentioned. What uh, what denomination is it? Oh, um, it's a Catholic church. Okay. Um, yes, uh, the uh, the the, uh, the priest there is. Um, I got to look up the name. Hold on. Where is the name? No, I have it. The priest is um, uh, Father Alonzo. Um, maybe I'll have a little chat with him, see what this this town's all about. You know, you can really tell what a town is like by its people. Mm, enjoy yourself, ma'am. Meanwhile, Cliff, what are you up to? Cliff's already on his way to the church to uh, speak to the father. Oh, well, you can run into Dolly then on the way, I guess. The two of you can be heading over there roughly the same time. Um, Ernest, what about you? I think I will accompany Nina to go look to see if we can spot this obelisk what's your approach on that you're just going to go out to the street and look around or i mean you said it was tall was tall yeah it seemed, it seemed tall in the picture it wasn't like like a you know it, it was taller than a man like it was probably like you know maybe 15 mm-hmm. 20 feet tall yeah i think we'll Ernest will kind of you know take a turn around the town and see see if he can spot it it was standing in a circle yeah indeed uh you know what's your approach i want to go down and talk to juan first before we head out to look because i want to see if he can tell me anything about the valela pereras hmm. if anybody else around here is a valela Pereira. uh yeah um He'll just tell you that straight away. Um, the uh, if you're just talking about businesses, um, the tobacco shop is the Valela Pereira Tobacco Shop, and Philip Valela Pereira is the man who runs it. And she will turn to Juan and say, "Is is Mister Valela Pereira very known? I mean, well known here. Is this well established?" Besides, of course, the street name. Oh well, sure. Uh, I mean, Phil's a you know he's a, a local. Uh, I mean, everyone around here is just sort of biding their time until oh, till whatever. Tell Phil hi. I I will. Um, did have you heard of a Joaquin Valela Pereira? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I know Joaquin. Um, oh, he's he's been gone for quite a while, ma'am. Did he... Did he I heard he moved here? out to Silver City. Yeah. Yeah. So, you haven't seen him? Oh, not in, uh, not in a good long while. Probably at least a year or two, maybe. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. I will go and speak with Philip. 
Mm, yeah, he'll probably know more if you're here looking for Joaquin. Mm. Yeah. The church. Mm. The church, the church, the church. It is called on the sign, the Castro Negro, Castro Negro Chapel. It's a large adobe building with a tall bell tower and stained glass windows. The bell tower seems like it's the highest point in the city, in fact, city, town. It looks like a sort of old Spanish Roman Catholic, Catholic church. Except that it's different in the sense that unlike every other building, it's not made of adobe. It's made of like stone. And it stands out for its beauty, but also because architecturally it just looks really different from everything else in town. It sounded like you were heading straight into the chapel cliff and Dolly, you're going to go take a look at the cemetery. Why don't we start with the cemetery? Um, yeah, the cemetery is probably, um, you know, I can't, I don't know, if, I don't remember if it's on the map or not. Let me look. Um, it's just, yeah, it, there's the little, it's just like right there in the little churchyard kind of area right in front of the church. Um, you see various headstones and things. What do you do? I want to take a look at the headstones and see if there's uh, a lot that say, dates on them. I'm looking specific specifically to see if there's a lot of, uh, Ones for little kids, babies. Oh, That's yeah, interesting. Thing. Make a um, make a investigation roll. Can I? Because I am looking for something. I'm looking to see if there's a lot of them or if there's very few of them. Something. I think. I think following up some of your clues that you have already, I'll give you the second die. Nice. Yes, six. Nice. Get a cool insight. Get all the information. Probably the key piece of information is in all of these tombstones or all these headstones, there are no Diaz's or Valela Pereira's on the tombstones. It's all various and assorted other names. Huh. Also, no children. Well, that's also because you got a six. Um, how do I want to do this? Let me think. You hear whispers in the graveyard. Even in the middle of the day, it sounds like wind at first, but it's not. It's some sort of, it's almost like a dozen voices whispering some strange litany. There's a feverishness, a frightened quality to it. Go ahead and make an insight roll. You got a four, so your insight goes up to two. How does it make you feel? A little bit excited. I knew there was going to be something weird, and there is. And I think I whisper back a very quiet, hello? Can you hear me? The voices are all, oh, no, say no, 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 no. And as soon as you say hello, I look around the cemetery to see if there's any, I mean, if it's ghosts, maybe they're making leaves move or there's footprints or if it's aliens, maybe there's like a weird alien smell. I'm just looking around for any source of this whispering. Excitedly, because this is pretty exciting. I'm keeping you on your same roll still. 
until I'll tell you that your eye is drawn to the tower. Father Alonzo Pereira can be found inside the main part of the chapel cliff. He is a bent old man with wispy white hair and very vivid green eyes. His eyes are really interesting because his face looks very like, you know, gnarled and old and and he himself looks very like kind of spent, but his eyes are big and bright and vivid. They're very young. And he says, Oh, hello. We um we're not having a mass today, but if you'd like to take confession, I think that can probably be arranged. Uh, well, actually, Father, I was hoping uh, I could just talk to you for a little bit about a different matter, not not confession. Uh, uh, my name is is Clifford. Uh, I was baptized under the name George, though. Or sorry, confirmed. Oh. Um, uh, very good, good. Well, what's uh, Clifford? Um, what are you what are you here for? What how can I help you? Well, I'm I'm actually looking for uh, a friend of mine, and I think he uh, came to town uh mid-september and i think maybe he came to talk to you too oh what was your friend's name uh david lane make the roll a four we'll come back to that nina taking the casual stroll to the tobacco shop or um yeah i mean it's it's basically passing the library and then like as we're doing that i mean she looks at ernest and says do you think it would be something that for whatever reason your friend would have stopped by there and then she points to the library If he had a say in the matter, I imagine he would. But I'm going to level with you, Miss. I have reason to believe he was he was brought here against his will. For what reason? Well, the, well, that is the question. Howdy, folks. Hmm. You see a man in a khaki sort of law enforcement outfit, a cowboy hat. He kind of sidles over to you. He seems to have just sort of appeared out of an alley. Maybe he was watching you the whole time. He says, I'm Constable Fred Garcia. I'm what amounts to law enforcement here in Castro Negro. Don't get many people in town come through very often, but we're mighty happy to have you. Thank you. That's very welcoming. Um, yes, we're just uh, strolling around and enjoying your town. Um, that's close and cozy, I suppose. It is. <laughs> yes, I. It is. What does what does he look like? This this constable. Oh, um, let me take a look. He is, um, tall, tan, um, a little soft in the middle, maybe. Brown eyes, and, you know, kind of, you can't quite make it out, but it looks like his hair is probably a little thin. Pretty average looking in general. You don't get many visitors here, you say? No, no, not too many. But, uh, you know, I always keep my eye on the bus when it comes in every week, though, just to see who might be paying a visit, and it's not many people. Well, that's interesting. Now, might I ask you a question? I suppose, although I'm used to being the person who asks the questions around here, partner. Oh, I see, yes. Well... 
I have a friend, Professor Godfrey. He, last I heard, he was, he was, came into town on the bus in the company of two tall, dark-haired men. Looked like they might be twins. I wonder if you might have seen him arrive. Maybe. Possibly. And I'll give him a description. Uh, make, make the investigation roll. That's just doing like a... Just a single light die. Risk light one. Yeah, yeah. Six. A six. That's the best information, plus a little bonus. We'll come back to this. Dolly, what are you doing after you're done in the cemetery? Well, good journalist always follows her hunches, so I'm going to go see if I can take a look into that bell tower. Indeed, indeed. Let's take a look here. It might only be accessible from the inside of the chapel. Um, find that out shortly. <laughs> Oh, yeah, you have to go inside the chapel to get to the bell tower. Um, you can go in and you'll see Cliff talking to Father Alonzo. There are some stairs that kind of inside that go up to the top of the tower. That's where I'm going. And indeed, Father Alonzo, even if he was inclined to stop you, he might be too engrossed in his conversation with Cliff. Speaking of, uh, Cliff, what was your result? Uh a four. Four. It's pretty good. He says, yes, yes. Um, I was actually in correspondence with young Mr. Lane um for well a number of a number of months, actually. Um he's well, uh he came into town a month ago, in fact, um, after we had already been corresponding um at some length. And to continue his work. And uh well, I haven't seen him since. I know he was staying at the at the Herrera across the street. Yes, he was, but he he left. Oh well, I uh, I know that he was staying at the Herrera and I thought he would say goodbye on his way out, but he didn't i assume he just got on one of the wednesday buses and left or tuesday the next you know, whatever have you that that doesn't seem like david but uh, are you involved in the same area of research that he was oh no no uh we're just we're friends oh yes well he had um uh very 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 interesting ideas and much of what he was looking into, uh, well, he was um, he was very interested in the history of Castro Negro. Interested in people, families, that sort of thing. I would do a little bit of archival research for him at the library from time to time and send it to him. Um, but it's all sort of uh, <laughs> odd things. He was very, very intrigued most by the idea that the uh, proprietor of the hotel he was staying at, young Mr. Herrera, is actually the and or the descendant of the famous Gabriella Herrera. Do you know who that is? I, I don't. Well, around the time of the founding of Castro Negro, well, let's just go all the way back. <laughs> Castro Negro was originally called Agua Blanca. And at that time, it was, how should we say, something of a, a refuge for people on the run from the Inquisition. Ms. Herrera was a famous witch, or so they said. And this is where she... Uh, this is where she came to stay, make her life um, 
and he thought that was very interesting. <laughs> I'm not sure it had any connection to what he was looking into, though. Uh, that I'll, I'll have to dig deeper into that. Thank you, Father. Uh, Aqua Blanca is quite the the pivot in terms of a, a name. Maybe things get the names that they need. Perhaps, yes. Uh, thank you for your time, Father. Uh, if I have further questions, is it okay if I come back? I'm always here. <laughs> I don't get many people for Mass, so I'm rarely busy. That's what the bus driver said, that people leave town for for service. It seems oh, Yes, odd. yes. Um, we don't have many locals who, who, um, who come here, <laughs> sadly. But nevertheless, my mission is what it is, and I'm here for the spiritual edification of anyone who wishes it. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your time. Mm. Dolly. Tower. This little staircase that winds up. It's a bell tower, actually. You get to the little landing at the top. There are slit-like windows all around. And the top is like a sort of hexagonal sort of space. And the bells are right above. The atmosphere here is very, very thin. Even though the tower is not that tall, it feels like you've climbed really high into the air. And the most striking figure in the center of this room, there's a statue carved from some sort of black stone that shows a sort of distorted human figure partially covered by a shroud with a sickle in one hand and then pointing somewhere with another. Make the insight roll just to see the statue. Roll to one. You're keeping it together. This is intriguing, I'm sure. What do you do? So this statue, you said that there's a shroud. Is that carved into the statue or is it yes. covered? Yeah, it? yeah, it's 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 like carved. Yeah. It looks almost like a depiction of death almost kind of. Yeah. I'm going to look where the statue is pointing. Is it pointing out a window? It is indeed. You see out that slit window the tall obelisk that was in the postcard. I think I, I look really long at this obelisk because I, I caught a glimpse of the postcard, but I didn't look at it in detail. And I'm really surprised that we didn't see this really tall obelisk just down in You town. wouldn't have, because there was a hill. You, ah. This this tower looks up over the hill, or looks yeah. you can see down. Yeah. Um, does it look particularly weird or <laughs> I mean, it seems like the statue is definitely pointing at it. That all that feels That's very weird. Yeah. architecturally and per intentionally. It's very strange, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. I think I'll take another look at the statue now and see if there's um, maybe a name of the artist carved into it. Date. How how are you doing that? With my eyeballs. There's no name. <laughs> okay. If I. Oh man, I know this is going to be such a bad idea. If I touch the statue, can I tell what it's made out of? Like as soon as you of... touch it, you have a vision, a memory of the first time you saw someone die. The first time you experienced death. Think about it for a moment. Meanwhile... Ernest Pickett, you got a lot of information. You're getting a lot of information, as much as you can, anyway, from Constable Garcia. What did you ask him about? Asked him if he'd seen Professor Godfrey getting off the bus in the car, mm. and gave him a description of the two men he was seen with and of the professor himself. He says, um, describe those men. 
Well, I heard, I heard they were tall gentlemen with dark hair, high cheekbones, green, green eyes. That, and they looked uh, like twins. Well, um, they were probably from Castro Negro. Oh, what makes you say that? Yeah. People around here have sort of a look, I guess. Is that so? Like yourself? Are you a local he, man? He's like, no, 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 I'm not from around here. I've only moved in town, no, well, maybe three years ago. They needed something resembling law enforcement. <laughs> so here I am. I consider it a bit of a retirement. I see. Well, you have the air of an old time Western lawman, I must say. Well, I find that it makes me disarming. Gets me to, gives me the ability to put you at ease, make you want to open up. For so example, anyway, these... I've learned you're here looking for this Dr. Godfrey, and I barely had to ask any questions at all. Well, I was hoping you might be able to tell me something about, about that. Unfortunately, I don't know much more about what might have happened to him. If he was a doctor of any sort, though, I assume he was here. Maybe a guest of the Diaz's or some such. Just because, well, what what else is a prominent person going to be doing in a place like this? If that is the question that occurs to me. It is the question indeed. And... You got to do these gentlemen that he was seen with sound like they could be members of that family? Possibly, yeah, very possibly. And I think as he's talking to you, a bug, a cockroach, climbs out of his mouth. At first, the little feelers are just feeling around, but then it just keeps crawling. I want you both to make insight rolls, please. Nina got a six, so Nina, you're going up to insight two. Ernest, you got a one, so you're okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> he'll notice it eventually, and he says, God damn it. He knocks it away. He's like, Actually, oh. I'm up to insight three, so this should be fun. <laughs> How does it make you feel that he's, you just saw a bug crawl out of this man's mouth? I, I mean, she's trying hard not to say anything. Because, well, I mean, you know, even being a nurse in the hospital, I mean, like, you know, there's there's always chance of, of weirdness. But this is the first time she's seen one actually crawl out of somebody's mouth. <laughs> he knocks it away. And he's like, bugs. <sighs> I don't know what it is. I can't keep them off of me. You must be very sweet, then. Yeah, well, that's mighty nice of you to say, man. Look, you two enjoy your stay here in town. I hope you find your friend. If you need anything, if you get into any kind of trouble, well, just holler. Oh, we're not here to get in any kind of trouble. Indeed, indeed. And then he walks away, and I'll just leave you two with this moment, having just watched a bug crawl out of this man's mouth. That that man is somewhat unusual. Definitely. I mean, that that was carried off with some oblong for sure. I mean don't know how calm I would be just having something that 
gross <laughs> coming out of my mouth. Uh, like it was something had that happened often. It's quite a vivid image. Now. How about we take a stroll up to the Diaz house? I want to speak with Mr. Valela Pereira first. I need to ask about my friend, Joaquin. Very well, then. Let's check in with Dolly briefly. Dolly, tell us about the first time you witnessed death. I think we flash back to Dolly as quite a young child. The richest man in town, in her small Midwest town, has uh, bought a Model T and is parading it up and down the streets for everyone to see. Uh, she stands on the side of the street with her, her family watching this amazing contraption that is going to completely revolutionize the whole world. Uh, go down, do go down the road. Of course, there are no traffic rules or anything like that. A small child goes running out in front of the Model T and the driver, this rich man, swerves to avoid, crashes into the side of a building and is ejected right over the the flat um, windshield and cut to pieces and lands in a heap in front of his vehicle. And he looks up at Dolly blinking and coughs with blood spewing out of his mouth and dolly covers her eyes for just a quick moment she's horrified and when she takes her hands down nothing's there the building is fine the man is driving down the road she sees a small child come running out and she goes running out herself and pushes the child out of the way before this car can swerve and the man continues driving down the road. Make an insight. You got a two. What's your current insight? Two. Two. So you're you're okay. Let's take a five minute break. Cliff, what do you do after you're done with Father Alonzo? I think I'm going to uh, go chat with Juan. Okay, sure. Um, you can find him. What, what he he's he'll kind of see you and kind of come out to the lobby area and say, "Oh, you weren't gone long." Oh no! I uh, I just stopped by the church or the chapel actually, and and talked to uh, Father Alonzo. Oh, uh, oh, good. Uh, how how is he? Oh, uh, he seems fine. I, I suppose. Uh, but okay. um, I was asking him about my friend, and he actually uh, he said that David actually spent some time talking to you. Oh yes, um, yes. I guess he did. Uh, I was thinking on it after you went upstairs and um well uh he was very interested in the history of this area um my uh one of my ancestors is um Gabriela de Herrera uh who was something of a famous witch and uh why why do you think David was so interested in Gabriela well, I gather he'd been doing a fair amount of research even before about the town before he even got here. That was my understanding, at least. Um, he <laughs> he um, he mentioned to me he was um, very interested in in the people here, and well. I think he found quite a lot more than he bargained for. That sounds uh, a little ominous, Mr. Herrera. That's what I deal in, <laughs> ominous statements. Sort of a, a thing when you're the descendant of a witch. Right. 
Right. Uh, you and, and David, did you spend a lot of time together? And he gets a little, um, he kind of blushes a little bit and says, um, you could say that. Yeah, we were, yeah, I guess, I guess we were friends in a way for the short time he was here. What about you? Are you close friends with David? I, I suppose you could say yes. Oh, right. Well, um, I hope you find out what happened to him. You have no idea where, when, where he went when he left. I just, I just assume he got on one of the buses. I didn't see it myself, but that doesn't seem very friendly for David to just leave. Well. Uh... He um he had a hard time here at night. Uh, you've mentioned a lot about night being difficult. Could you tell me more? Well, I um I I probably shouldn't say anything else, Mister Avery. You never know who's listening ooh, ooh. Uh, more more witches in town hmm. well if they are they're not the kind that ride on brooms I I'm very worried about my friend Mr. Herrera I can see that I would appreciate any help you could offer Well, remember that farm I mentioned earlier today? The shepherd farm. Yeah. You, uh, David said he saw that barn in his dreams. Isn't that a funny thing? That is. <sighs> Good luck, Mr. Avery. Thank you. And so, Nina and Ernest, you are going to the tobacco shop, yes? Yes. The Valela Pereira tobacco shop, a small store, store run by Philip Valela Pereira, as you know. And the first thing you notice um, is that the window is quite empty of cigars and cigarettes and tobacco-related accessories. Instead, the window just has a small um, awning atop which are six little green statuettes lined up in a row. What are they statuettes of? Can we see? <clears throat> you can. They are strange looking things. They seem like they are perhaps of Eastern manufacture. They are probably jade by the look of it. Um, and they just depict people, but with strange features. They're all different. Some have kind of elongated heads. Others have hands that sort of taper to tentacles. Just misshapen people. What do you make of that, Miss Durham? Jade is, I expected turquoise knickknacks here in, in New Mexico. Jade is from the Far East. Very rare. And 
strange figures for sure. I can't what? quite make out what they are. No. Why here? And specifically, why here? And she's I'm assuming that the tobacco shop actually has a name on it. Like it's the yeah, it's the Valera Pereira tobacco shop. You right. can go in. Yeah. You're <sighs> hit with that smell out. of tobacco. It does have tobacco products in it. Inside, um, though. Inside, yeah. Um, you know, sort of like angled bins with cigarettes and cigars and things and humidors, you know, and that kind of business. <clears throat> there is a man who comes from the back. He's quite tall, uh, very jet black hair, and very striking green eyes. You can see the green eyes before you see anything. As he I think emerges from the darkness. Ernest takes note of that immediately. He says, Hello. Are you, uh, how can I help you? Hi, um, I'm Nina DeRime, and I was looking for. Is he like, is he like towering like very close to me? And she's just looking up and then just, um, I was looking for Joaquin. Oh, yes. Yes. Joaquin. <laughs> I don't see what's so funny, sir. Ah. What about him? I had gotten to know him in Silver City, and I found out that he was from here. I, I'm i sorry, I... Can you not do now that? Now look, now look here, mister. My he looks knows. like he's just noticed you. Like, uh... I think, yeah, Ernest kind of stands protectively closer to Nina. I'm looking for Joaquin. Make the investigation roll. Dang. <laughs> Creepy. Uh, so, one light die, right? Yeah, I think so. Unless, I don't think nursing is really coming into play no. here. Mm -mm. <laughs> A four, okay. not bad, actually. He says, Oh, I'll tell you about Joaquin. <laughs> Troubled youth. He was my nephew. Of course, everyone around here is someone's nephew, aren't they? <laughs> He made us all very unhappy, leaving Castro Negro. You don't leave Castro Negro. Why? We have obligations. Duties. Responsibilities. <laughs> he, uh, he had said he was out to see the world. He didn't get very far, did he? <laughs> Your nephew, you said? Your yeah. brother's boy, perhaps? Someone's boy. Everyone is someone's boy, after all. <laughs> well, what is that supposed to mean? Can I interest you in some fine tobacco products today, sir? Nina will actually kind of um, buck up her courage a little bit and just kind of point to the outside window. And... Why the 
statuettes instead of showing off your wares in your window? What is there to show off? A cigar and a cigarette looks the same everywhere you go, man. <laughs> Not much call for a display. <laughs> I just bought these statues. Joaquin shirked his duties. And he got what was coming to him. What? What did he get? Got down. Everybody goes down. Especially folks that don't want to do what's right. And what does that mean? Below. He went down. Below, Below the earth. He was buried? <laughs> Not quite. But certainly, in a figurative sense, I suppose. I'm going to ask you to please speak plainly sir i'm gonna ask you to buy a cigar or a cigarette or please see yourself out i'm nina's going to to go ahead and just pick up like something from like a nearby shelf and then just just grab it and say here i'm, I'm purchasing this i mean is there any other family besides you that knows where wakeen is Ma'am, this town is quite literally full of Valela Pereiras. Practically bursting, you might say. Enough so that you have a street named after you all. Yes, I suppose. If that sort of thing's important to you. No, it's not. Joaquin is. Just look down, ma'am. That's the key. Gotta go beneath. Meanwhile, Tali, after you're done having your little flash of insight, having touched this statue, which appears to be made of like um, sort of volcanic rock, what do you do? I think I just sort of try and shake it off and I'm going to head back down and see if I can convince Cliff to come out to this obelisk with me. Yeah, I mean, you can, you'll probably even see him go across the street from the tower, right? So you can head over there to where Cliff is. Um, Cliff, are you done with Juan? <laughs> For now, yep. Yeah. You can meet up in the lobby then with Dolly. Miss Mason, uh, I was actually just going to come looking for you. You are an investigator, yeah? Of sorts. Uh, I'll, I'll take it. Um, I've, I've heard about a barn outside of town, and I was hoping... Uh, I, well, I'd like to go there, and maybe some investigation expertise would help. What did you hear about this barn? Apparently, my friend was quite interested in it. It's all Juan would say. They had... Uh, more of a relationship than he first implied oh that kind of relationship oh i'm i i'm sure they're just friends hmm. well just saying what makes for a good story makes for a good story i suppose yes absolutely why don't we go check out this barn and you, then you can come with me to check out a well giant obelisk that I spotted just over a hill. An, an obelisk? Yes. It doesn't really fit in with the decor or the uh, the the style, the architecture around here. 
It was very I can, strange. I can give you some uh, directional, some cardinal directions here, so that, that might help you make your decision. Yes. Uh, the obelisk is the path is almost exactly southwest of the chapel, outside of town, and the barn is south. Practically the same direction. Yeah. About a half uh, mile south. Yeah, is the I barn can... farther than the obelisk? Mm -hmm. Just trying to mm -hmm. make an efficient path. Yeah, like what's the most efficient path here? Um, they're about the same distance. So. Okay. Well, let's uh, let's check out your barn first. I imagine there's probably no electricity in there, and well, once it gets dark, it's going to be hard to see. I'm pretty sure the obelisk will still be standing. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. I I knew you were the right person to ask. This is why I'm an investigator. Always investigate the big obelisk at night. I mean, come on. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, <Totally> fine. <laughs> Obviously, <laughs> um... nothing bad will happen. Let's check in with Nina and Ernest. Um, I mean, if the two of you head straight to, so Dolly and Clifford, if the two of you head straight to the um, the barn, you will necessarily go past the tobacco shop. So that's just worth pointing out. Unless you take Valela Pereira Street instead, in which case you'll go by the tomb. So, yeah. I wouldn't mind walking by the tomb just so we can get a like a little glimpse of what it is because it sounds like one a, a gift shop in a town like this is weird. Yeah. <laughs> sounds so good. Go that way. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's check in with Nina and Ernest then. I don't think Philip has anything else to tell you. No, I think she's she's pretty much like you know wanting to make her purchase as hurriedly as possible to get away from his rather like overbearing and very odd gaze um and then she will i guess grab whatever she grabbed and then um we head out of the tobacco shop yeah i think ernest sort of protectively ushers her out first and then kind of locks eyes with philip as he also leaves. That man definitely knows something about your friend. Uh, gotta look down? Go beneath? I mean, what does that mean except something so completely sinister? Do they take care of Joaquin? I mean... I'm sorry to say that that's what it sounded like to me. Yeah. And what's more, that man in there yeah. matches the description that Professor God of the people Professor Godfrey was seen with. I think your friend and mine might be mixed up together in something. Yeah. Did we? I guess we don't know yet where this obelisk thing is. She she like hurriedly digs in her purse, dumps the whatever the heck. You don't happen to smoke, do you? I mean, I just as it, this. as it happens, I do. Oh, here you can have this. I I don't. I mean, well, that's very kind of you. I will. I'll be sure to reimburse you later if we do happen to go to the. The changeling, perhaps I can buy you a drink. That would be wonderful. Um, what time of day is it, by the way? Like when we're. Yeah, I think probably about the time you. I mean, it's still probably like early yeah. in the afternoon. So. All right. Now, if we do head out of the tobacco shop and then make our way back towards the hotel, if we look down Herrera Lane, is like the hill in our way so we can't quite see the obelisk? You, oh, yeah, you can't see the obelisk from the ground. Can we can we see uh, what may be the Diaz residence? You I'm presuming it may be down Diaz Avenue. But... You can't see it from, from it's not like visible mm -hmm. from town, not from the ground. Yeah. We 
You may have to do some walking. Um, it seems so. Wonder if we go into and then I think like because it's right across from the chapel. I'm wondering if if you know we notice that the bell tower looks like it's the highest point, so we could go check that out. Yeah, I mean the bell tower is definitely the highest point. You can get a good view of everything from yeah. from there. Absolutely. Yeah, I think maybe we can see from there a good vantage point and see if the obelisk is well around here. Um, that's some good unless, thinking. Get the lay of the land. Unless you wanted to go to stop by the library and then see if they knew, if they met your friend. Well, I'm hesitant to suggest we split up. The residents of this town we've met so far do not fill me with confidence. No. So perhaps let's tackle the tower first and then we'll go to the library on our way. Okay. Sounds good. So... We had to, I guess, we, you know, Indeed. go into the church. Meanwhile, as you're walking by the tomb, the other two of you, I'll just tell you what you see in the window so you can mark it. Unlike the window of the tobacco shop, the window of the tomb is quite cluttered. <laughs> um, it has all kinds of stuff in it um various statues and statuettes it's got uh like weird looking cabinets with strange painting on them um all kinds of like medallions and different things like that i mean it looks like a sort of like like an occult shop like you know there's like a ouija board like propped up that kind of thing and Cliff then home. Oh, yeah. It doesn't seem like this town would have enough visitors to warrant something like that. Well, Juan did say they make do around here. Maybe this shop also gets in, I don't know, toiletries and whatnot for the town. It does seem a little strange, though. We'll have to uh, pay it a little visit. Yes. In fact, let's do that right now. This is open. Oh, uh. The barn's uh, yeah. been standing for a while. It'll stand for a little while longer. I suppose that's true. Okay. And you never know. And I think she's still talking. She's going in through the door. Maybe your friend came in here too. It is a pretty weird spot. That's true. When you go inside the shop, the man behind the counter is tall, gaunt. He has gray hair, bright green eyes. And he looks up at you. He says, Oh, welcome. I don't usually get customers who aren't mail order. Have a look around. I'm sure you'll find something that will be most stimulating. Nina and Ernest, as you are going inside the churchyard, a dog trots by. It stops and turns and looks up at you with its large, green, vivid green eyes. And that'll conclude our session for today. Let's go ahead and do stars and wishes before tomorrow. <laughs> um, stars, of course, are things you enjoyed about the game. Uh, story the system anything else uh or people characterizations or whatever what have you and wishes are things that you hope happen next time tomorrow <laughs> whoever wants to go first take it away damn creepy jason <laughs> like even living in zoom is still creepy holy crap that was great oh my god <laughs>
Sorry, I had to start that one right right away. <laughs> um, no, I enjoyed uh, I enjoyed the uh, the role play. I mean, like very, um, you know, stiff in the beginning. But I think it's like since it ran, ran like a little bit more trad than than like what we're used to with Car from Brindlewood. I think it was an interesting change. You know, just to be able to kind of like just please our way into it and then like you know like start getting into the investigation and um yeah i mean even though it wasn't as much role play as maybe we're used to i mean like it's still it still was very interesting and like just to see the different parts of the town and also meet these people that seem to resemble each other a lot if they're from here um yeah creepy as hell so i'm looking forward to tomorrow when we get to explore more of this place and to see if there's anything such as night moves <laughs> in Cthulhu Dark. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm really enjoying everyone's characters. I, I had a lot of fun kind of just picturing this character of mine that I came up with on, and everyone else is also kind of leaped out as being, you know, interesting, engaging, and, you know, you kind of got the gist of them right away. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, there's so many threads to pull on. This is, this is really interesting. I have no idea what's going on, but, um, I'm enjoying the, the process so far and definitely enjoying, you know, the great finish with the creepy dog, great, great characterization with the looming weirdo in the tobacco shop and his, uh, his laugh was also also great um and the classic jason whispering voices in the in the churchyard <laughs> yeah it's uh all, all adding up to a lot of a lot of fun uh yeah i have very similar stars um i really like all of these characters they're really different um, not just like in the, what their goals are, but how they're kind of going about it, but in a way that really kind of meshes well. It kind of feels like a movie watch where a group of people find themselves intertwined somehow and have to solve this mystery. And it, I, I really like that. The whole process of going through this mystery and finding out bits and pieces and trying to piece them together is a lot of fun. Um, again, because we're so used to playing the between Brittle Bay and such that it's it's shockingly different when there's actually like a mystery that's already set it feels it has a very different feel um and it's yeah it's, it's a lot of fun um the npcs are creepy as hell like absolutely terrifying some wacky village of the damned shit is happening here that i i am really here for uh i'm excited to watch this slippery slope slide into the depths of hell or whatever is gonna happen i have no idea uh, so yeah, my wish is to see more of this creepy town, more of the creepy people, and more of what's going to happen. Uh, lots of ditto from me. Uh, I really enjoyed the the town getting a a, a map and having a kind of uh, a more concrete idea of how things are laid out, and and seeing all the street names and kind of trying to extrapolate the history through that is really cool and uh I'm looking forward to seeing what's in what's in the barn yeah stars i had a really great time uh, i've run secret of castle negro probably like five other times and um you know it always because it's a module it always kind of plays out the same way everything is always in the same place and uh and i know it very well because i've covered it and, and played it so often um but nevertheless, it's fun. Like it's fun to do. It's it's always enjoyable to uh because like I know the story and because the story is kind of a set thing, I get to kind of focus on other types of the GMing, you know, which is like the characterizations and things like that. And so that's always good fun. Um but I thought everyone did a great job of like bringing their characters to life and kind of like showing us who they are right in the beginning. Um, you actually, in the module, you actually do all the Silver City investigation in game, like you do that separately, uh, or you can be together in Call of Cthulhu, um, and, but you start in Silver City, basically, and, um, and you're all, you all start together and you're all kind of 
generally investigating the same thing. I like to do it where you where you're all have different motivations connected to the various hooks, and and I like to cut out the Silver City part because it's, in my opinion, it's the least interesting part of the module. Um, but you can, but like if we had like four sessions, I would probably do the Silver City part, right? Um, and so uh, that's interesting. Uh, I like the way we do it in Cthulhu Dark, and I like that Cthulhu Dark lets you kind of move through because there's a lot of there's a lot of clues. It's a very dense like there's a lot to discover here, and so I like that Cthulhu Dark is such a light, speedy system that lets you kind of move through it and find things and do things. Um, but it very much wants to be doing one thing, which is investigating. Right? Um, it's it's unlike my games in that way. Right? It does not have that like backstory component that that heavy role play component is really really focused on like lovecraftian investigation right um but i enjoyed how some of you were able to work that stuff in though uh like i really liked the the flashback thing with the touching the statue i thought that was great um and we kind of learned a little something about uh about um dolly in that way i enjoyed um the kind of a uh, little strange like rivalry going on between Juan and uh Cliff uh this sort of like unspoken like kind of thing that was kind of happening with David and I I'm anxious to learn more about Nina and Joaquin's relationship that's my wish um as well as like I really want to know like why Ernest like if there's more to why Ernest is trying to help Dr. Godfrey than just like I was coming this way anyway and he was my friend you know I wonder if there's more going on there so um, and, and I just, I am excited for you all to start to discover other parts of this module. So there's a lot more. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, any other stars or wishes? Yeah, we were just saying in the chat, actually, how I think everyone was a big fan of that intro. I, I really liked the, it just felt like a very organic way to bring the four characters together at the beginning. And like, that's a really tough thing to do in a game. And you often, you know, often games will just kind of get that over and done with as quickly as possible. That whole opening scene on the bus was was such a natural feeling intro and the way we all have our different motivations that are kind of bringing us in the same direction worked, worked really, really, really well, I think. Yeah, this module has a really interesting, like, basic, like, kind of puzzle in the beginning problem of, like... The, the bus thing is really important. Like you arrive on a Tuesday and you can maybe leave on the next Wednesday, but if you're not done and you don't take that second bus out, you are stuck there for a week. Right. And so like, that's the, that's the real, that question, like you're all gonna have to make a decision when Wednesday rolls around, you know? Um, so we'll see, <laughs> but um, I think that's all I've got though. If there's nothing else, we'll go ahead and just wave goodbye to folks watching the video.